morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration service this morning. Welcome whether you're in the congregation this morning or whether you're watching us online. My name is April McIntyre. I'm a lay minister here at St. Michael's. Uh, so I'll be leading the first part of the service and then Joe will be talking to us in a short while. So, today is Trinity Sunday. Now, I don't know whether that means much to you. Probably not. I'm sure you have some sort of idea of God, perhaps as a father, as the creator. Of Jesus, the man who wandered around Galilee with his friends, was crucified and then rose from the dead. Or maybe you've heard a bit about the Holy Spirit... The, the spirit who, who is inside us, who stirs our hearts and helps us to connect with God. But the Trinity, one God in three persons, it's all a bit mind-blowing, isn't it? So I've got two pictures that help me to relate to God as Trinity. The first one is Rublev's famous Russian icon. It shows three figures round a table. I'm sure that some of you will be familiar with this. It's a fascinating picture to study with its links to the Old Testament story of Abraham and Sarah. But what really helps me is that space at the front of the table. As the three figures of the Trinity eat together, there's a space in their midst, and that space is for us to join in, for me to join in, for you to join in. So we're invited to be a part of the fellowship of the Trinity, to abide with them as they abide in us. The second picture is one that I picked up years ago. It's not a religious picture, but I love the colours and the sense of movement. It's called La Danse. And I imagine that these three figures represent the Trinity, as if they're sort of letting their holy hair down in a vivid dance of joy and love. So perhaps we could leave those pictures up there as we take a minute now just to quieten our minds and open our hearts as we prepare to meet with our Trinitarian God in worship and prayer. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, take us, each one of us, take us by the hand this morning and lead us into the presence of God. To the Father who waits with open arms. To Jesus, the Son, who died that we might be forgiven and given eternal life. Holy Spirit, make a place at your table for us so that we can listen and feel and just be with you. Cleanse us in, our, in your radiant fire. Burn away all our rubbish. Breathe your breath in us and through us. Enfold us in your threeness. Take us up into the dance of your oneness. May we abide in you and you in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So let's, let's stand now and see if we can sing even louder than the, the, the babies. We're going to start our praise and thanks to God. Praise is rising. If we'd all like to stand, please, that'd be great. Praise 
step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. reading today is taken from John chapter 16 verses 5 to 16 and I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away. For for if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. 
I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Let's just take a moment to pray, shall we? Loving God, we quieten our hearts and our minds in your presence. We ask that you would speak to us. Continue to encourage us. Thank you for the songs that we've sung and the words that we've already heard. Thank you for the privilege of being together. Help us to hear you and respond to all that you have to say to us. Amen. As April said, it's uh, Trinity Sunday, and I have to say I was really relieved when I saw that the theme of today um, is growing in the spirit and not something like a theological exploration of the Trinity or something like that. I was very relieved. Um, and as April said, that the Trinity um, is a, a mystery in, in some ways, and there are lots of, lots of things written about it. But the passage that we heard in our reading today talks about Jesus um, preparing to, uh, to die and to go back to the Father. And he's preparing his disciples and talking to them about what's going to happen when he's gone. And we have this introduction to who the Spirit is and what the Spirit does. And I want to just talk a little bit about the Spirit um, who I think often is the kind of neglected third person of the Trinity. We do talk a lot about God the Father, we talk about God the Son, we talk a lot about Jesus, but we don't talk a huge amount generally about the Spirit and how the Spirit works and what the Spirit does. And even that word Spirit is used in all kinds of different ways um, in our society and in, in life and culture generally. So we might say, oh, you know, that person's got real spirit. And we kind of mean that they, they've got a bit of gumption. That's, that's the word, isn't it? Gumption. Um, I feel like I've just gone back to the 50s or something. Um, but we, we might say that, you know, oh, I do like a, a tot of spirits now and then. Anybody uh, up for a tot of spirits? Yeah, a few little hands waving there. You know, different meaning entirely. Um, and the word spirit, as you know, we talk about spirituality, which today can just about mean anything you know, from hanging a few crystals in your window to, you know, all sorts of weird and wonderful things that people might be into. And yet spirituality is at the heart um, of the Christian faith. And the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit is absolutely core to our relationship with God and our experience of God. So I'm going to say um, just a few things a few snapshots really about the spirit and particularly what it might mean to grow in the spirit. And I want to start by thinking about the extraordinariness and yet the ordinariness of who the spirit is. That might sound a bit contradictory. The word for spirit um, in the Bible is um, ruach in the Old Testament, a bit of Hebrew there for you, um, or pneuma in the New Testament, in the Greek. Um, pneuma is where we get the word, for, you know, pneumatic drills? Yeah, that's where that comes from. And it's got a sense of power in it. But both words have all sorts of different meanings, like, like many other words. One of the things, particularly ruach, has the sense of breath um, or wind. It's particularly used around breath and breathing. And 
Um, the Latin word, oh, you're getting a bit of a, a language lesson this morning. The, the, the Latin word spiritus is um, used in all kinds of ways that have this idea of breathing. So um, inspiration, we feel inspired, but it also means to breathe in, very simply. Breathe in um, or inspiration. Um, aspiration, we talk about aspirations, hoping for, but it actually means to breathe through. So um, in medical situations that I'm hoping I'm right here, people will use um, some of those terms, the sort of um, sp spirit type terms to describe different aspects of breath. And I find that a really helpful thing to think about when we think about the spirit. Um, spirit as the breath of God, which is how um, the spirit is described very often in the Old Testament as God's breath. And Jesus breathes, it says he breathes on the disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Um, in these COVID days, that might not have gone down too well. Um, but, um, you know, that, that sense of breath being really important. I think that communicates something about the everyday, ordinary experience of knowing God's Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit when we come to know Jesus. Jesus says um, that he will give the Holy Spirit almost as a kind of replacement um, for his presence. It's through the Spirit that we know Jesus, that we experience God. And that sense of the presence of, of the Spirit, when we look in the, um, the New Testament, the Spirit sometimes comes in quite dramatic ways. In the book of Acts, um, we celebrated Pentecost last weekend, and that passage from the book of Acts is often read where Jesus' friends, the disciples, are gathered together, and the Holy Spirit comes down in like these tongues of fire. And there's this massive dramatic experience and they're talking in other languages and they spill out onto the street and they're declaring all sorts of things about God and who God is. And there's this transforming that takes place. And some of these experiences of the Spirit are very dramatic. But what I want to think about today is the, the work of the Spirit which is taking place all the time in us and through us when we know Jesus. Because often we don't recognise what the Spirit is doing and we don't necessarily even recognise the presence of the Spirit because the presence of the Spirit is as natural and as necessary to us as the breath that we take and the breathing in and out. Um, and I think breathing is one of those things that you only notice when there are problems. I, I don't know. Um, we don't. We, if those people who've tried mindfulness, maybe you know, you try and control your breath, or you become very aware of your breath. But most of the time, we're not aware of our breath. And I think life in the spirit is a little bit like that. That our life in the spirit happens in the ordinary places of life, in the day to day. So I want to think, first of all, about the Spirit's work in our lives in terms of our character and the way the Spirit works in us to transform us and change us. Because the Bible says very clearly that as we uh, grow in the Spirit, we are changed and transformed into the image of Jesus, which I think is an amazing thing. I think it talks about us being transformed from one degree of glory to another. Um, and I don't know if, if you look at the people around you or you look at yourself um, in the mirror in the morning, whether you think, oh my word, you're even more glorious than you were yesterday. Um, maybe, maybe some of us do that, uh, maybe we don't. Um, but there's, as we grow in our um, connectedness with God, in our walk with God, in our Christian faith, there's a changing and a transformation that takes place within us. And sometimes that happens in big ways. Some of us may be able to look back and think, wow, that was a situation or a circumstance or a season in which I really changed. But I think mostly that happens in very small ways, in almost indefinable ways. But we look back and we think, oh, I'm not the person that I was a few years ago. And I can see that this has changed or that's changed. Perhaps I'm a little bit more patient than I used to be. Or maybe a little bit more gracious in my uh, dealings with others. And the, 
the Bible talks about the Spirit um, transforming us through a process called sanctification, which is a very long word, but it basically means becoming more holy or becoming more like Jesus. And there's all kinds of things that the, the Spirit does. And very specifically, we're told that the Spirit speaks to us. The Spirit leads us. The Spirit opens our understanding. The passage we heard this morning talked about the Spirit leading us into truth. It talks about the Spirit enabling and the Spirit empowering. Um, If you're interested in looking at those, I've got all the Bible verses, but I'm not going to uh, read them all out. But there's this whole activity of the Spirit which happens day by day in our lives to draw us closer to God. And that works in different ways with different one of us, ones of us, and in different ways at different times. So I think sometimes when we're, um, we're reading scripture and something just sticks out, the spirit is leading us into truth. I think in those times where we suddenly, we do something or we say something and we have that sense afterwards that we just feel a real sense of discomfort about it. We think, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe you don't feel like that. I, I do quite often. Um, I believe that's the Holy Spirit nudging us, just giving us a sense of what's right and wrong. When we end up in situations where we're in a conversation and something that somebody says just touches us, and that's the Spirit just giving us that, that comfort or that, that consolation or that sense of encouragement. So the Spirit works and leads in different ways. The Spirit opens up truth in different ways, but the Spirit is at work in us to transform us. And it's not like um, one of these kind of self-help guides. Does anybody else like self-help books? I quite like a self-help, yeah. I quite like a self-help book, I have to say. There's something about thinking, if I do this, this, and this, then everything's going to be okay. I find that really reassuring, even though I know quite a lot of the time it's not as simple as that. But I think sometimes there's, there's wisdom in some of these things. But this isn't about kind of, you know, becoming your best self so that you can feel fantastic. This, this is about... <laughs> sorry, Anne. <laughs> that didn't mean to make you chuckle quite so much. Um, this is about... Becoming all that God intends us to be so that we can be a blessing to the world around us and the people around us. And I think that's an amazing thing. Yes, in that we will be fulfilled. We will have a sense of, um, I think, joy as we grow in God. But that's not what it's all about in the first instance. God loves us, he wants to bless us, but he wants to bless the world through us as well. And that leads to my second point, which is about the Spirit equipping us to serve others and to serve the world. And I've deliberately chosen that that thing about serving because I want to talk about gifts. But when I talk about gifts, sometimes we put those in little boxes Um, The gifts of the Spirit, um, the ones uh, written about in 1 Corinthians 12, um, are only a few of the gifts that are talked about. Those particular gifts, I am going to read them because I'll probably leave some out, um, are, are if you like, the more sort of supernatural gifts. So wisdom, uh, knowledge, faith, healing, um, different kinds of powers, prophecy, uh, discernment. Um, speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. Those are the so-called spiritual gifts, the supernatural gifts, times when um, the Spirit speaks maybe quite powerfully. They can also happen in quite ordinary ways. Um, But often God will speak quite powerfully through somebody um, to touch somebody else's life. Or we may um, experience a healing Um, when somebody prays or simply in God's presence. Those are gifts of the Spirit. But we also see in other places in Scripture other gifts which are described um, as equally important. So things like um, serving, any kinds of works of service are seen as those gifts which are inspired by the Spirit. Teaching, encouraging, All of us can do that. I'm guessing many of us will know people who are just brilliant at encouraging others, who when you speak to them, you feel better afterwards. That's a gift of the Spirit. 
Showing mercy, being forgiving, is described as a gift of the Spirit. Again, something that's really powerful. If you do things that you feel are wrong or you mess up or you, um, you know, hurt somebody, there's something so powerful in that person saying, it's okay, I forgive you. It's a gift of the Spirit. And then uh, giving is another one. Again, all of us can do that, but it's described as a gift of the Spirit. And again, you know, the, in, in other places it talks about administration, um, prayer, all of these kinds of things are gifts which are given to different ones of us in different ways. And I wanted to, I wanted to read this particular verse about spiritual gifts. And this is talking about, if you like, the, uh, the ones which are a bit more supernatural. But I think it, it's, it's relevant. So I'm going to have to put my glasses on. Old age, I can't see the words. Um, so it says there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of serving, but we all serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. And I think that's a really important principle, that sense of it being the same spirit, but working in different ways in different ones of us. And I think that's true both for the way God works in our character and the way the spirit transforms us, and also in this sense of giftedness. And because we are all different, each of us have a different kind of relationship with the spirit and a different experience of the spirit. And some of us may have an experience of the spirit which um, works through our emotions and makes us have these amazing feelings and we, have, we sort of sense things and we feel that very strongly. For others of us, it may be a more logical um, experience where God is at work in our minds so we think certain things and we come to a logical conclusion about things and perhaps we don't have those same kind of feelings that we hear about other people having. For still others, it may be that it's about faith, that we have a sense of believing and we don't necessarily have the sort of experiences or the, the, even the logical processes that other people have, but we choose to believe. The spirit is at work in all those things and none of them are any better than the other. And I think that's so important for us to recognize that sense of difference. And I know, you know, I've been in, in situations where somebody said, oh, I really felt the, the spirit was there in that particular situation. And I'm thinking, was he? You know, and it's not to say that that person is any better or that I'm any worse. But our perceptions and our understandings and our experiences are different. And I think that's really healthy and really positive. Um, but actually, it's so important that we value those differences and honour the different ways in which we experience and understand and connect with God. The other thing that I, I wanted to say uh, about the Spirit this morning, because I just felt it was so important, we just talked about the Spirit and serving and God uh, wanting us to be a gift, if you like, in ourselves to the church and to the wider world. And that sense of the Spirit being at work beyond the walls of the church, I think is really important because I believe the Spirit is the same spirit that in right at the beginning of the book of Genesis, it talks about the spirit um, hovering over the unformed um, waters before God spoke the word and everything came to being, whatever you think about the creation narrative and um, you know the, the way that happened. This sense that God as creator and the, the spirit was at work um, hovering creatively over everything. I believe that same spirit is at work in our world today. And for me, my experience certainly was looking back, I can pinpoint times long before um, I had a relationship with God or I had a, an understanding of who God was. I know I had times where I had an experience of the spirit, where things happened to me and in me 
that drew me closer or get, made me curious about God. And the Spirit was at work, if you like, hovering over my life long before I understood that that's what was happening. And I'm guessing for many of us, we can pinpoint times or we can pinpoint situations where we can see God at work in the world in all kinds of different places and unusual spaces. And I think it's so important that we recognize that the Spirit is moving and working and creating and touching and drawing people and leading people and encouraging and healing and all kinds of things. And some of that will be through us. And some of it, God will simply be doing. And I just love it when I get into a situation and I realize that God has already been at work in that situation. And that encourages me in my praying and in my hoping um, when I can see situations that are difficult in the world or in the lives of those around me to know that the Spirit is at work there and is able to touch and to heal and to draw people and to encourage them. So I just wanted to um, emphasize that because I think it's important. So we've talked about life in the spirit. Um, we've talked about the spirit and character. We've talked about the spirit and gifts and serving. We've talked about the spirit at work in the world. But how do we actually grow, not just in our understanding and knowledge of the spirit, but how do we grow in the spirit? And I think growth in the spirit is like um, any other growth. So um, I'm really into gardening, as many of you know, um, and actually, um, growth happens. If you sow the seeds in the garden and the soil's in the right, the, the soil's right, and the, um, you water things and the sun shines, then things grow. Um, in my garden and my allotment at the moment, the weeds are growing. And that's, that's part of growth too. Um, but I think, I think growth in the spirit happens um, as we respond to God in our day-to-day -day life. I don't think we need to push and force and strain and struggle. It's a turning towards and a responding to God in the everyday. The Spirit is described in, in very personal ways as a person um, in Scripture. And it does say that we can resist the Spirit. So when the Spirit nudges us, we have a choice as to whether we respond to those nudges or we just go, no, actually, I'm not going to respond to that. We have a choice as to whether we welcome the Spirit or quench the Spirit. And it says in Scripture, too, that we can grieve the Spirit by the ways that we are. So there's a, a challenge or an invitation, if you like, to respond positively to all that God wants to do in and through us by the Spirit. And I think that's the day-to-day -day ordinariness of life, just growing in our, our awareness, being conscious perhaps of the choices and decisions we're making. If there's something that comes into our mind or something that we sense in our hearts or our guts or however it works for us, just choosing in those moments to respond to the Spirit and to cultivate that willingness to make those choices and to move forward. Life in the Spirit and growth in the Spirit is a bit of a mystery. And I say things grow, but I do know too that sometimes things don't grow and we don't know why. Um, and it may be sometimes we feel a bit stuck and a bit stalled and a little bit like, oh, I don't know what's happening, but my whole life of faith feels tough at the moment. And actually, in those times, that's when faith is so important, that we wait and we hold on and we trust that growth will come. So let's take a moment in quiet. And wherever you are at the moment, however you're feeling, whatever's happening in your life, whether you know Jesus or not, just take a moment to think about something that you could take from this morning to reflect on as you go from here.
We're going to pray in and through some of these things in a moment. But before we do that, I'm going to hand over to Adam and Claire and Grace to lead us in a song as part of our response. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flow. So we take a few moments now to pray um, for ourselves, for our world, for the needs that we are aware of. I'm going to leave some space um, as I pray. Um, you might want to uh, name 
people or situations in your own mind or in your heart um, in the quiet before God. Just use this time to reflect on those situations that you're thinking about. We pray for ourselves. Loving God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your spirit who renews and inspires, who changes and transforms us, who equips us and empowers us to serve. You know, you know each one of us, Lord. You know where we are in our journey with you. Thank you that you accept us and love us just as we are. Thank you for the differences in the ways that we experience you. Help us to be secure in your love. Help us not to compare ourselves with others. Compare our experiences with other people's. Thank you that you work within us as individuals. Our own unique personalities. Will you help each one of us to grow? Change and transform us. Help us to respond to the work of your spirit in our lives. Help us to see more clearly what you're saying to us and where you're leading us. Give us hearts that are open to all that you want to do in us, that we might be a blessing to all those that we meet. And in the choir, we bring before you particular areas of our own lives where we want and need a touch from you at this time. We pray for our world and for the many struggles and difficulties that we see around us. We thank you that your spirit is at work in your world. That Lord, as we pray, you know all these situations fully and intimately. Where we see headlines on the news, you see individuals. Where we see nations, you see people and communities that you love. We pray for all the areas of the world at this time where there is conflict and war. Particularly bringing to you the situation in Ukraine and the ongoing conflict there. We pray for peace where there is war and struggle. Pray that you would strengthen and give hope to those who work towards peaceful solutions to seemingly impossible difficulties. We pray for all those who are displaced or refugees, for safe havens and for new beginnings. We pray for all those working on behalf of refugees and particularly for the project close to our hearts here. We ask that that refugee sponsorship scheme might continue to flourish and that you would be at work in all the decision making and the formal processes and as a family is placed. Lead and guide that whole process, Lord. And we pray for those in our nation at this time who are struggling with the financial and economic difficulties that are around. Pray for those particularly who are really finding things tough and don't have the means to live and eat and heat their homes.
And we pray for those who work on their behalf, for food banks, for those who campaign for justice, for all those who are in helping and supporting roles. Loving God, sustain them in their work and help our nation to be a more just society. And as we think about our world in a moment of quiet, do name before God particular situations or countries or groups of people that are on your heart at this time. We pray for those in need in our own community. And today we pray particularly for Eileen, for Carol, for Evie, for Craig and his family, for Jaden and Helen, and for Wayne. And we pray for all who mourn, and particularly for the family and friends of Tom and Anne. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before God those who we know who need a touch from God at this time. And we draw our prayers to a close using um, the words of the Lord's Prayer, which are on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We come to that beloved spot in the service where we have our notices. So would anybody like to come and give a notice, Paul? Um, as many of you will know, we hosted a great evening last night for, with John Archer and Paul Bell. It was very much a community event, and we had lots of people who were not from church coming. And I'm sure if you did come, you probably would agree we had a really fantastic evening. It was really very, very good. Um, John Archer spoke a little bit at the end about his faith, which I thought was very well pitched for people who are not part of this church, so that was excellent. Any surplus funds are going to go to the uh, refugee sponsorship scheme that we've been talking about. Uh, Joe talked about serving, and I particularly wanted to just say thank you for, not just for those who came, but for those who did so much in very uh, many different ways to make the evening a success. And I'm going to mention a few. I apologize in advance if you did something, and I haven't mentioned you all what it was. But for Sarah, who designed such a brilliant leaflet, and the ticket printing, which I think made such a difference, for people and the local shops who uh, sold tickets, for those who organised the raffle from the refugee team, for all those who worked on uh, serving, buying, selling drinks, thank you, for the many who made cakes. Um, there may be some left over, I'm not sure, but if you're lucky, there may be a few. For people who set the church out, for Jonathan and Richard, who... Uh, did such an amazing job on the technical side and for Jonathan for enduring being the, the, the nub of all John Archer's jokes last night. <laughs> for all those who helped to reset afterwards, for Joe who did such a great job for comparing, I'm sure there's more, but thank you for everyone who helped in whatever way. 
and we were even on the way home accompanied by the dulcet tones of download blasting from Donington. <laughs> what more can you ask? So just thank you to all of you. Anyone else? Uh, I'd just like to say that I have a few copies left of my little book of reflections and poems. So if you've ordered one or more, or if you owe me any money, um, this is your, your chance. Or if you want to just buy one, uh, I will continue to sell these last few at five pounds. Okay. Over to the band again. This is a real rousing one to finish right, with. Right, so you all up you on need your feet. To stand Have a boogie. Up. Let's get ready. <laughs> to finish with. May the presence of the Father enfold us, the peace of the Saviour be upon us, the power of the Spirit be within us, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Have a lovely Sunday. Enjoy the sunshine while we've got it. <laughs>